Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about the monostable multivibrator which is a second type of multivibrators. In the classification of multivibrators I have explained you about three different types of multivibrators. First one was bistable multivibrator which I have completed in the past videos. Now monostable multivibrator, <coughs> monostable. So what is the difference between the bistable multivibrator and monostable multivibrator? In the bistable multivibrator, there are two stable states. So in order to change the states of the transistors, we need two triggering pulses. But here, the name clearly tells that it is a monostable. Monostable nothing but one stable state is there and one quasi-stable state is there. So monostable multivibrator, it has, it has, one stable state and one quasi stable state so one stable state that is nothing but it is a permanent state until you apply a triggering pulse this particular state will not revert back Okay, that is what the meaning of stable state. And another one is a quasi-stable state, which is a temporary stable state. Even if you don't give a triggering pulse, the state will automatically turn back into original stable state. Okay, so that's why the monostable multivibrator has the name monostable. It is having one stable state and one quasi-stable state. So how many triggering pulses are needed for this one? It needs one triggering pulse one triggering pulse okay so as it is having one stable state to break that stable state we need a triggering pulse one triggering pulse okay so as in the case of bistable multivibrator here also we have two types of monostable multivibrators there are collector coupled monostable multivibrator and emitter coupled monostable multivibrator. Two types of monostable multivibrators are there. They are collector coupled monostable multivibrator. And second one is emitter coupled monostable multivibrator. Okay. And the other name of this monostable multivibrator is a gating circuit. So it's also called a gating circuit. because in many applications the input signal which is given from the other circuits is nothing but a monostable multivibrator to uh, perform some particular operation in a specific duration which is given by this quasi stable state that's why the monostable multivibrator is also known as gating circuit now let us see the circuit diagram and operation of this monostable multivibrator from the collector coupled type Okay, so this is the collector coupled monostable multivibrator, which is the first type of classifications of the monostable multivibrator. Collector coupled monostable multivibrator, MMB, monostable multivibrator. So here the collector of first transistor, the output of the first transistor's collector is given to the second transistor's input at the base. And similarly, second transistor's collector output is given at the first transistor input is nothing but base. Along with these two, base one is also having some voltage like a biasing supply minus VBV, like a fixed bias supply. But unlike your collector coupled bistable multivibrator, here we are applying only at the one terminal of the two bases of two transistors. Okay, so 
Now let us assume a state where the transistors are in stable state. Assume the first transistor is in off state and second transistor is in on state and this state is a stable state. Okay, so what is the stable state we have assumed? We have assumed a stable state such that Q1 transistor is in off state and Q2 transistor is in on state. See the constructional difference between the uh, bistable multivibrator and monostable multivibrator. Here, from collector 1 to base 2, you have a capacitor. You have a capacitor. Actually, here voltage divider network has to be there. But this capacitor allows the quasi-stable state. Because of this existence of capacitance between base one, base 2 and collector 1, this provides the action called quasi-stable state. That means the capacitor charging and discharging of the capacitance actions will change the state of the transistor Q2. Okay, But whereas here, the, on the other side we are having only resistor which is resistor R2 followed by R3. R2 followed by R3. So R2 followed by R3 nothing but it provides a voltage division network. So this voltage division network normally stay, makes the transistor gives some specific voltage. That's why it is not having any uh, quasi stable state. Okay, but uh, whereas capacitor allows charging and discharging because of the automatical changes in the charging and discharging allows the quasi stable state. Okay, now see. Transistor Q2 is in on state and Q1 is in off state. I will write here. Assume a stable state Q1 is in off state Q2 is in on state. Now this is a stable state I am, I am saying. So in order to break this particular stable state, there is no other chance. Okay, we have only the chance to apply a triggering pulse to change the states of these two transistors. So in order to change the states of this particular Q1 and Q2, we are applying a negative triggering pulse at the base of transistor Q2. So apply negative going signal negative going signal nothing but a triggering pulse negative going signal at base 2 of q2 okay see what happens if you apply a negative triggering pulse here negative triggering pulse so this negative triggering pulse what will do it makes the Saturation transistor will now bring back to the cutoff region because of the negative supply. Okay, as this transistor initially is in on state, on state means it is having sufficient base to emitter voltage. But now we are forcibly bringing the transistor into cutoff region by applying a negative supply. This negative supply makes the transistor Q2 off. When this transistor comes into off state, what happens now? Here some voltage is developed across the transistor B, uh, across this collector C2. This voltage is sufficient to bring the transistor Q1 into on state. Okay, so simultaneously the transistors are changing their states when a negative triggering pulse is applied at the base 2 of the transistor Q2. So Q2 now comes into off state and Q1 comes into on state. <coughs> Then Q2 comes into off state which eventually makes the transistor Q1 on. Now the problem starts. See here. Q1 comes into on state. What happens when Q1 comes into on state? When Q1 comes into on state, there is a flow of current I. There is a flow of current i so previously previously when this transistor is in off state what is the voltage at this point it is the maximum voltage vcc it is maximum voltage vcc because there is no flow of current okay listen clearly 
when this transistor is in off state there is a there is no flow of current so the maximum voltage whatever the maximum voltage that has in that path vcc that will appear at this point a so output in the previous case was vcc vc1 equal to vcc we can say now when this transistor comes into on state when this transistor comes into on state what happens there is a flow of current there is a flow of current i through this resistance r1 okay now vcc at this point previously now it is dropped to vcc minus i into r1 so the voltage now is dropped to vcc minus voltage at collector of q1 now drop to vcc minus i1 into r vcc minus i1 into r1 suppose if you are taking i1 into r1 okay now what happens what is the other path here see some other current is also coming through this resistance through this resistance and this current as this transistor is in off state as the q2 transistor is in off state there is a flow of current through resistance r through capacitor and the same current will also goes towards q1 so i'll take this transistor current as uh, if i have taken this i1 this is i2 hope you understand because there is a path from vcc towards the on transistor so definitely there is a current flow through this resistance r and as well as through the capacitor towards the collector and then towards the transistor so this all happens when the transistor comes into on state now as this current flows through the capacitor capacitor has a chance to charge now capacitor has a chance to charge now so as the, as long as the capacitor charges the output of the capacitor the voltage across capacitor is applied directly to the base 2 of the transistor q2 okay now up to what level the capacitor can charge up to vcc because that is the maximum voltage appeared in that path okay so capacitor has a chance to charge up to vcc but when it charge when it charges up to the cut in voltage of this particular q2 transistor immediately the transistor q2 comes into on state and the states are reversed okay so there is a current flow from vcc to r and towards capacitor c so capacitor c charges up to vcc this is the actual voltage that the capacitor has to charge but what happens when voltage across capacitor reaches v gamma cut in voltage cut in voltage per vbe2 q2 comes into on state again see what happens when q2 comes into on state there is no voltage sufficient to to make the transistor q1 on so automatically q1 goes into off state q1 q2 comes into on state now if you observe if you observe in the beginning i told you apply a triggering pulse at negative negative triggering pulse at base 2 okay because that was a stable state this particular stable state see i will mark in the red color this state is a stable state this state is a stable state you are applying a triggering pulse and changing the states of transistors to off q2 off and q1 on but after application of negative triggering pulse the states of both the transistors have been changed but 
automatically there is a because of the flow of current from vcc towards the on transistor q1 the capacitor has a path to charge when the capacitor charges and requires the minimum voltage get the minimum voltage v gamma automatically the states of both the transistors again get back to the original stable state which is nothing but q2 on and q1 off okay one stable state is there and one temporary state is there that's why monostable monostable multi vibrator is having one stable state and one quasi stable state okay so if you observe the waveforms at this particular base 2 see it is the waveform at base 2 when transistor is in on state this is the stable state when transistor is in on state which is a stable state at that time we are having as the transistor q2 is in on state the base voltage is a vbe sat we can say it is vbe sat but what happens when the transistor comes into on state uh, off state the capacitor c charges it goes to vcc minus i1 into rc the level here this particular level is vcc minus i1 into r the voltage is dropped down to vcc minus i1 into r r1 r what is this r1 okay now from here the capacitor slowly charges charges and up to what is the maximum level it has to charge up to plus vcc but when it reaches the minimum voltage v gamma what happens immediately it turns back and provides again transistor on state vb sat is the stable state to disturb this particular state again we need to apply a triggering pulse okay so this is the operation of the monostable multi vibrator thank you